Hi everyone, it's Molly from Pain and Harp Studio. Today I'll be showing you how to draw a Niffler. Nifflers are from the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts universe, um, which I absolutely love. Um, I'll be drawing this little guy in club pencil and he'll be my first character from Instagram's six character fan art challenge. So you can expect to see me draw a couple of these other little fan arts as well. So on to the tutorial. So the pencils I'll be using today are Faber-Castell Polychromos. They are my favourite pencils for this sort of thing. And I'll be using the Caran d'Ache Luminance White for my white highlights. The only other thing I'll be using is my glassine to stop my hand from smudging all the lovely black lines as I'm drawing. And the paper I'll be using today is Stonehenge. And yeah, let's get started. So, starting my Niffler, I'll be using this light reddish brown colour to block in his face. So, first thing I do with a drawing like this is I create an all sort of map with this one colour. So, I'll push very hard for all the dark areas and really put some pigment down on the paper and to signify where the dark areas will be. So all using this one colour and then I'll be using really, really, really light pressure on the pencil like here to block in the light areas. And if there's any white on a piece at all, I won't put any colour on there because it's way easier to leave it white as it is rather than darken it up and then having to go and put white back over it. So I'm using a yellowy tone now to glaze the face with a bit more colour. So I'm doing the same sort of thing, putting the putting the pressure down for all the dark areas and leaving a really light, light pressure for all the rest. So this is a pink colour now, to glaze it even more. So now I'm using a grey, just to sort of tone the, the colour down a little bit because it's getting a little bit fluorescent here. So I'm also darkening it up a wee bit, being very careful not to put too much pressure over my light areas. So this is this dark colour I'll be using for the shadows. So here I'm putting in the little nostrils. Very, very fine behind my pencil. It's very hard to keep things nice and crisp. And laying the blacks down and the dark colours down when you've got a dull pencil. So here I'm outlining the little face and the little mouth and his snout, because you call it a snout. And here are the little wrinkles over his nose. Um, one thing you've got to make sure you have when you're doing a uh, drawing is always make sure you've got a reference photo so you know where your darks are, you know where your lights are, everything lines up. And it's just really, really hard to draw something realistic without a reference photo. Um, so here I'm going back with my white and burnishing. So burnishing is when you're pushing very hard and you're flattening the tooth of the paper. So once you sort of burnish, you can't get many more layers on it. So you sort of do that on your final layers. So I've just left enough tooth to go back and put some pink over just to put a little bit more saturation on it. So there's my little face. And next thing is the eyes. So I'm going with my very, very, very sharp black pencil. I'm going around and outlining the eyes. Very thin outline. And then I'm going to go around and shade the bottom half of the eye. So when you're drawing eyes, you've always got to leave at least a little bit of white in it for the catch light. It gives it... Um, a very realistic effect is when you leave the white in it. So I'm going through with my black, tiny little shadows, sharpening up the eye area and my little mouth. So I'm starting on the fur now, so starting with my light to dark pencils, starting with my very, very light greys like there, going through it and mapping it out like just, just like I did on the face. So starting with my darker pencils, so I've started creating the fur texture here. 
give me some blue and so here's my darker pencils so always work light to dark and here's my black so see that little sort of fur texture I'm creating that's very important so here we start on the feet so I've put in that first first color I used on the face the little pink blocked it in created my little maps and I'm going it through with my shadows and here's that little that orangey color so as you can see I'm not really leaving my lights light enough where I should be so that's so don't do that um, so here we go doing the other foot So when you drill feet, you've got to make sure you always have a shadow on the underside of the foot, which I'm just about to put in, um, to make it look round so they're not just flat. Here we go with my shadows. Um, so yeah, you've got to make sure, pay attention to where your shadows are on your reference photo, where your highlights are, and just take it slow, make sure to look at the reference photo a lot. I'm just defining the little toes. There's that little shadow I'm putting there to make it look rounded. I'm not actually 100% sure how many toes I've put in. But it's so small you won't be able to see really. Here's my little black. So see I'm jumping to black. It's better to work up slowly so you don't go too dark and then have to go back and light. Now which is what I'm doing here. So start light, work to dark and then you won't have to go back and light everything up again. Here's my little hands. So see how fine that point is. You've got to make sure it's very fine or it's just going to end up a big blob. Here's pink. And one thing I've done with the black fur is I've laid some blue in there so it's not just black and grey. You always always got to put colour in something, even when it does look black or white. Always put colour in there, it makes it look realistic. Don't go overboard, but just, just enough to stop it being flat. So I've laid a little bit of blue in with the black fur, as you can see. And here are the shadows. My little hands. So this little creature, it's called a Niffler, he loves all shiny things. He has this pouch which you actually can't see. It's sort of like a platypus. He has this little, or a kangaroo, something like that. It has a pouch and he stores an incredible amount of shiny stuff. And it's so funny. Um, anyway, I've went through and put a little more shadows on the black fur. So I'm just starting to draw his little pocket watch he's got holding there. So I'm just using that little yellow colour I used on his face and here it goes with the shadows always you've got to make sure don't focus too much on the colour it's not the most important thing you know you can do a black and white drawing and have it just as look realistic as a colour drawing the values is what matters the most so you know if you've only got a few coloured pencils that's all you really need to do amazing work so I've gone through and shadow the chain a bit and now I'm putting a bit of a outlining the sort of shadows and these little toes or fingers. Now usually in my work I don't tend to outline things this much. If it was like a bigger piece you wouldn't you wouldn't see me do that many outlines but because it's such a small piece and it's frankly an easy way to make things stand out. So now I'm going through and burnishing with that yellowy colour again. And now very very lightly I'm going in shading in the face of the clock. So only enough to lay a little bit of colour down and I'm going through and burnishing it a bit more with my white. And here I go putting the little little hands on the clock. So 
remember a very very sharp point for your colored pencil get that sharpener out which I think is what I'm doing here Putting a harsher shadow around the outside of the clock. There we go. Looks like it is nine o'clock. So it's very small. So don't bother, don't bother putting little numbers in. No one's going to see. Just little dots. Just gives you the general idea. Going through and outlining the fingers. And always remember, when, especially when you're drawing black things or black animals or whatever it is, or anything with dark shadows, don't be scared to put your dark values in. If it's dark, if it's black, you know, you've got to put it in. Um, I used to be quite scared with all the black, black stuff, all black pencils. Or I'd put these tiny little shadows in and it would look flat. So you make sure if it's dark, you've got to put the darks in. If it's light, you've got to put the lights in. So the last stage of doing an artwork is just the fine tuning. Um, so this is when you sort of start really looking at your reference photo. Is there any little details missed or other little lines need to be sharpened? So I tend to go through with my black and white colored pencils and just make everything stand out just a wee bit more. So what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of shadow under him just to give him a bit more depth so he looks like he's sitting in it rather than just cut out. So I'm using my lightest greys to darkest greys, building my shadows. And here is my finished artwork. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Now remember you can follow me over on Facebook and Instagram. Links below in the video description. I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you do, you'll be able to see a couple of my other little characters appear very soon as well. So, thank you. Bye.